Well, hello everyone and welcome to another show of Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. I'm your host, Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. And if this is your first time to tune into the show, I want to give you a very, very special welcome. Uh, whether you're tuning in on uh, iTunes or Google Play or any of our YouTube channels or any of the websites, we're just glad you're here. And if this is your first time, well, here's what we do on the show. We talk about all things real estate investing. We talk about single family houses. We talk about commercial. We talk about land. And yes, we even talk about the real estate in between your ears that you must own before you can really control a lot of real estate out here. And as I said, I'm known as the private money authority. So we talk a lot about getting your deals funded without relying on banks, without relying on credit, your credit or your verification of income, or quite frankly, even your experience in real estate investing. So if you are watching on one of the YouTube channels, be sure and comment with questions below the video and we'll get all of your questions questions answered. Well, we are celebrating our one year anniversary of being here on the show. We are now approaching 200,000 downloads and listens since launching the show. So a big thank you to you, our viewers and listeners of being here on the show. And if you've been a, a loyal follower, speaking of which, if you have not subscribed yet, you definitely want to subscribe to on iTunes rate and review. We always love your feedback. Thanks to you, our audience. So we recently hit a new and noteworthy on iTunes. So that's pretty fantastic. But if you have been a guest or if you have been a follower and been tuning in, you know, I've had fantastic experts and guests here on the show. And today is no different. But before I introduce my guest today, I've got a gift for everyone. And that is if you're interested in getting more funding for your real estate deals without relying on banks, I've got an online class, master class waiting for you to attend right now and go check it out after we get through the end of the show. And right here's the website, www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. That's Jay Connor, J A Y C O N N E R dot com forward slash money podcast. Well, on with the show. I'm very excited to have my special guest today, and it's first his first time appearing on the show. My friend Marco Santarelli, and Marco is a real estate investor. He is a best selling author, and he's also the founder of Narada Real Estate Investments. What's really cool about Marco's company is that his company is a nationwide provider of turnkey cash flow investment properties. So listen, folks, if you are remotely interested in learning about how you can be in real estate investing without having to find the deals, without having to rehab the deals, without having to sell them, if you just want to be totally pretty much passive and get high rates of return by investing in real estate, then you are listening to the right show today. So since 2004, Marco's company has literally helped thousands and thousands of real estate investors create wealth and as importantly, passive income by being involved in real estate. And he's got his own podcast as well. He is a host of the top rated podcast show, which is titled Passive Real Estate Investing. So his company, Narada, helps take the guesswork out of real estate investing because they are a turnkey provider. So with that, Marco, welcome to the show. Jay, it's an honor to be on your show. Thank you so much. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, as we've gotten to know each other, we've got a lot of things in common. You do the business, you teach the business, you are a, a coach yourself. And I thought I was in a lot of masterminds until you recently told me you're in six mastermind groups or involved in six mastermind groups. So that's a testament to the fact that we never, never, never should stop learning and networking, right? Absolutely. I mean, you talk about what's the best investment. The best investment is the investment in yourself, in your mind, your body, you know, your spirit, because the stronger, better you are, the more you can impact other people, inspire other people, and the better you create an environment for yourself to do good in the world and follow your passion. I love one of the words you just said, and that is inspire. I find it my, uh, my calling. I've got two responsibilities. Number one, get them the information that they need, but along with that, inspire them to go out there and do it. And I bet you fulfill the same thing. That's my mission. I mean, if you really want to talk about my mission, it's, it's very clearly defined. 
And that's essentially to help 1 million people create wealth and passive income and put them on the path to financial freedom. And the, the ideal vehicle is real estate. So I'm very passionate about all of that stuff. I love it. Well, in just a few minutes, we're going to talk about the turnkey investing concept, what that is, what it looks like, how people can go out and do it. But first, my audience and myself, we want to hear your backstory. What happened in your past that led you on the path to where you are today? That's a good question, Jay. I actually have spent a lot of time thinking about that. And to make you know, essentially a long story short, I just knew from a very young age that I wanted to be wealthy. I'm not sure what clicked in my mind. It probably happened at the age of eight, but I made it my life's mission to really learn everything I could about wealth and money. So in my early teens, I began to study business and real estate and personal development. And I did go to university. Unfortunately, I took criminology. And I say unfortunately because I was led down that path by a friend of mine who said, yeah, you can make a lot of money being a police officer. And so I thought, well, that's really the path I should take. But I knew within months that was not where I wanted to go. My dream of time and financial freedom was just much larger than anything the university could ever offer me. So I felt like I wasted four and a half years. But I bought my first rental property when I turned 18 because I could qualify for financing. I bought a wow. property, fixed it up, yep, leased it, managed it, and it was all textbook. And the education I got from that experience was more valuable to me than anything and everything I got out of university. Then if you just fast forward to 1997, this was kind of one of those major turning points. The internet was all the rage. You know, the dot-com businesses were popping up all over the place. The craziest companies were raising capital for the dumbest ideas. I mean, you might remember pets.com of all things. No, so, I don't remember. You don't remember pets.com? Well, it was a massive disaster. <laughs> but long story short, my friend and I decided to create essentially the Amazon.com back then of the day for the golf club industry. Sounded like a great idea. So my wife and I moved to California. We hired a CEO, we raised $9.5 million of venture capital funding, and we were on our way to become a publicly traded company. But then the market crashed in March of 2000, the NASDAQ crashed, and our dream, my dream of becoming financially independent disappeared literally in just one trading day. So we had to lay off 105 employees. I was the third last to leave. I took some time off and I decided, you know what? I, I love real estate, I love wealth, I love helping people. I blended it all together, I purchased 84 properties from Southern California, 2,000 miles away from Florida to Michigan. And I did that in a nine month period. And people were coming to me saying, hey, can you help me do the same? I didn't want to mentor, I didn't want to coach, but I said, look, I got deal flow and I can help you build that portfolio. And that's really how this business started. I was investing for myself personally and investors were asking for help. And I said, look, there's a niche here, let me help you too. And invested in 2,000 houses in a three year period close. I purchased 84 units in nine months from 2,000 miles away. Gotcha. Because we were just getting ready to change the course of this interview. Yeah. I, okay. I get that. I get yeah, that. that. It was an 84 unit portfolio in nine months and I did it. For, and many of those properties were sight unseen. I was able to create the systems that allowed me to find and purchase those 84 units. And I did that from California. And that's how I created this business, this turnkey model. I got you. Well, now let's hang out on that for a moment. So the way you located and funded and acquired those 84, were they uh, commercial or were they single family houses? They were mostly single family homes. Also had some duplexes and fourplexes peppered in there and then a couple of small apartments. So the way you found those deals, when, when did you say that was? What year? 2004. So 2004. The way you found those deals, the strategies that you used to locate those deals at, you know, in other markets, the way you did that, is that still applicable today to where the audience would benefit of hearing that story or is that outdated information? No, the principles and the methodology are still the same. You still want to have the same strategy and criteria. You still want to assemble your team to help you achieve that because you're not doing it all yourself. You could, but why would you want to? have all that brain damage. I needed a way to do it myself. I needed the systems and the people to help me achieve my goal back then because there was no turnkey company like I have today and, and providing this, you know, 70% done for you service. It didn't exist. It was me. So I had to assemble the team and find the right people to work with, such as the real estate agents to help me vet, the, find and vet the deals. 
the property management companies, the inspectors, the contractors, the lenders, you know, virtually everybody that you need, I needed to put together on my team. It's a lot easier today because now I've assembled that. But back then I just had to do it on my own. And look, I made a lot of mistakes. I, I had my own failures. I've lost a lot of money. I got ripped off by my property manager who stole like $6,000 from me on, on one day. So the deals that you found, so yeah, let's hang out for another moment on how you, how you build that portfolio that quick. So did you find most of the deals through realtors in the multiple listing service or did you do off market marketing? It was mostly MLS listed properties because we were still in a market that wasn't a super strong seller's market. There was more of a balance. In fact, some of the areas I was buying in actually had a lot of inventory. So it, was, it really was a buyer's market. There was a lot of inventory. The MLS was the go-to place. That's obviously different today, but some of those deals were pocket listings and they were off market. So the fact that I was doing volume, the agents were now coming to me saying, Hey, you know, I know you're a buyer you're, you're a player. Let me show you some deals. So this question is going to apply to today and back to 2004 what markets you want to invest in what is your criteria on saying yep that's a market i want to invest in today great question jay so a lot of investors make the mistake and this is my sixth rule of my 10 rules of successful real estate investing is to take a top-down approach many investors are presented presented with a deal quote unquote and it's a property they look at the condition they look at the photos maybe the videos and then they look at the numbers and they base 90% of their decision on that and that alone. That was the mistake I made early on because if I presented you a deal that I just described and it looked great on paper and the photos look great, and then you step back and you looked at where it was and it was on a street that had four burnouts and it was a sketchy neighborhood with high crime and it was almost a war zone, would you still want to buy that property? And the answer is no. Well, usually no. So you have to consider the neighborhood and the market as part of your decision making process and a lot of investors put very little weight if any on those two factors so to your question about what do i look at i start with the market first not the property i work top down i look at the market and i look at what are the jobs what's the job situation there are there jobs and is there job growth i do want to see job growth but if it's a flat if it's a flat growth but there are still jobs and there's a friendly business climate that's a positive. I also want to look at migration and all this stuff is available online. You can Google this stuff and use a search engine and find it. But I want to see positive net migration. If that's flat as well, that's okay too. But what I don't want to see is a long-term trend of negative migration to that market because what does that do? It takes away demand. And if you take demand away from, from real estate, you have fewer buyers for sales and you have fewer tenants for your rentals. So jobs, job growth, diversified economy, and net positive net migration are the factors I look for in the market. And then I start to look down further in terms of, is there inventory? Can I assemble the right team there? What kind of neighborhoods can I find that inventory in? I want to stick to those B, B plus class neighborhoods. And then the numbers have to make sense. Clearly, here in California, the numbers don't make sense. I don't want to buy a seven, eight hundred thousand dollar single family home that I can only rent for thirty five hundred a month, maybe four thousand a month. Those economics don't work. But if I can buy a hundred thousand dollar home in the Midwest and I rent for a thousand dollars a month, essentially what we call a one percent rent to rent value or rent to price ratio, that that numbers work. Those those economics work. So those are the things I look at at the macro level, at the market level but more specifically at the neighborhood level. And so that's a long answer to your short question, but I wanted to pack all that in because really you need to look at it all. Well, it makes sense. So right now, as of today's show, you're in 22 markets and you're growing. So you've got this turnkey company. So let's just make sure everybody understands what is the service that your company provides? The service we provide is free education, hand-holding investors to help them get to that next level. But more specifically is to help them build a portfolio of real estate that is cash flow positive and helps them create wealth over time. And we do that in two ways. One, by providing counseling, free counseling and education in the form of a podcast, articles, eBooks, books, et cetera, et cetera. So all that is provided at no cost. The other part of that equation is 
when you're ready to invest and buy that next rental property or the next two to add to your portfolio, we have at any given time between one and 200 properties spread out across these 22 markets in the United States in specific markets to help you build that portfolio. These are just essentially what we call turnkey rentals. Now let's define what a turnkey rental is because a lot of people think that what is essentially rent ready is the same thing and it's not. A rent ready property is something that may have deferred maintenance. It could be almost anywhere. It's just that it's tenant occupied and they're paying rent and you're getting cash flow from it. But that doesn't make it a turnkey by our definition. Turnkey rentals are properties that are in good markets, in good neighborhoods. They're either new or they're in like new condition. They are tenant occupied, professionally managed by full service property management. There's no deferred maintenance. So you can, and you can be cash flowing from day one once you close escrow. That to us is a turnkey rental property. Tied in with that is the whole experience, like I just described. So this is not a service for everybody, but it helps a lot of people, especially if you're busy or limited on time. If you're a professional, you've got investable income, you've got the credit, but you don't have the time. Look, at the end of the day, most people have a family, they have a career, they have their Johnny soccer game on the weekend, and they have friends and family they want to visit with. They don't really have the extra time to go through the learning curve of learning everything they need to learn to do this from beginning to end. Why not just bring on the team to help you do it? Robert Kiyosaki talks about this all the time. It's all about a team. It's a team sport. Investing is a team sport. Uh, so let's say that I am a person that's interested in getting involved in passive real estate investing, say with your company. So when I invest, am I investing in a property or am I investing in a portfolio and am I receiving some type of security? So how do I invest? I think the simple answer to your question, which might be what is going on in the back of your mind is, is this a fund or a syndication? And the answer is it's not a fund, nor is it a syndication. You are literally a direct investor, which is what I advise and promote is be a direct investor and be in direct control of your portfolio. In other words, be the CEO of your investment company. You're really, we're helping build, you build your own portfolio. Right. So when I invest and your company are my team players, so to speak, when I invest, I'm actually investing in a property or properties, right? Exactly correct. Yes. Okay. So to do that investing, do I need the cash or does it, does the math make sense for me to get a mortgage or financing to invest? Obviously, you know, the power of real estate, Part of the power of real estate is the ability to use other people's money, meaning that you can leverage your investment capital and you can borrow up to 80% of the purchase price. That's the magic of real estate, that and the depreciation. So if you can only put 20% down and borrow the other 80% and you can do it with historically cheap interest rates, how much of that do you want? The answer is as much as I could possibly get. So with conventional financing, you're allowed to get up to 10 loans per person, per, per credit score. And then beyond that, you're looking at portfolio loans, which theoretically have a, no cap. They're unlimited in supply. So you can build a portfolio as large as you want. You start off with these 10 conventional loans. If you're married or you have a significant other, you have a, another 10 there. So you have 20 as a family. And then beyond that, you build your portfolio using portfolio loans, which are not really that much more. They're about a percentage, percentage more above conventional financing. But yeah, you could buy all cash, but why would you want to do that when you can magnify your returns and magnify your wealth creation by having a larger portfolio with that same fixed amount of investment capital? You'd be kind of crazy not to. Yeah, that makes sense. As a matter of fact, a lot of our private lenders that we do business with, the interest rates that we pay them, since we're not talking hard money, I'm thinking the math on our individual private lenders would probably work well to where a real estate investor can get a private lender loan, as I do and teach. Um, my wife and I, we've got 48 private lenders right now funding our deals. Uh, so we, use, we can use private money to invest in your company in actual houses through your help. Um, so really, there would not using that model, there wouldn't be any limit to actually the number of, the number of properties. So how do i so let's say i'm a prospective investor and and, uh, and and i want you to help me find a house or houses to invest in how do i see which houses are available or learn about the houses that are available or or do i learn about those through you know 
strategy sessions with your with your people? Well, to take a half step back to answer that question first, if you are already out there looking for deals, you're probably already working with some people, whether they're wholesalers, whether they're whether you're combing, you know, the internet, Zillow, whatever it may be, or maybe you're working with agents and brokers and you already have an acquisition team, as I call it, that are bringing deals to you or helping you find those deals. That's one way to go about it. The other way to go about it is working with an organization like ours. When we have that initial strategy session, which can go for an hour, if not more, we want to get into your head and find out what is it you're trying to achieve. Let's map out a plan so you, we can take you from a to B, that's essentially your investment journey. We want to know what your investment goals are so we can help you build a plan around that to get there. Once you start to define your criteria, then you start to know what markets you should be looking at and the types of neighborhoods you should be looking in. And then we can show you or present with to you those properties that are already in the pipeline, many of which are on our website. If they're not there, once we know you as an investor and we have an idea of what, what you need, then we can contact our contacts, our boots on the ground and see what's in their pipeline to get that over to you. Because it's sometimes properties go under contract, they're not even on our website. They never will be. Because you may have a very specific criteria in terms of what and the rates of return. We know it's coming. It may not be on the site, but we'll present it to you and you know it's something that you can put under contract. So really it's it's not about shopping online as much as it is let's have a relationship with you to understand you and help you build a plan that works for you because it's not a, just about the properties. Real estate is a people business, not a property business. It, you know, you're dealing with people, you're working with people, your tenants are people. You have to understand that first. The, the real estate is just the vehicle to help you achieve, provide value and achieve a certain result. Let me understand the flow of a transaction. So would I uh, buy a property that your company already owns or would your company have located a property that's under contract to purchase? And so then I come along and because we've already, I've got a relationship with you, we, you know, you, your strategists know what I'm looking for and the range I've got to work with. Would I, as the investor, actually close on that property from the get-go and, and, and perhaps you get an assignment fee? How does that work? Yeah, that, so that, that's a smart business question. So 99% of the properties that we have available in our pipeline, whether they're on our website or not, are off-market properties. They're typically not on the MLS. They are from our teams, our boots on the ground in each of these markets, whether it be Birmingham, Atlanta, Boise, Idaho, you name it. The builders that we work with and, and the turnkey operators that we work with are essentially the ones we have working and contractual relationships with. So they're providing us that inventory. Much of it is exclusive inventory. Most of it is off-market inventory. Technically speaking, we don't own that inventory. It's owned by our partner relationships. However, when you go under contract, you are the buyer and the people that we are working with that we are referring to you, we're always that, that hub of the, of the wheel. You know, All the things that we work with are the spokes, including yourself. But ultimately, when you go to contract, it's you as the buyer and that LLC or, or whoever the holding entity is on, in Atlanta is the seller. And so you go into escrow and it's pretty much like a traditional real estate transaction at that point. It just goes through the escrow process, through a title company, you have title insurance, you have your inspections done. You, you do your normal due diligence. We verify the numbers. You know, they're already checked and verified, but we're going to verify again, like Ronald Reagan says, you know, trust, but verify. Absolutely. Right? right? So we, we go through that whole due diligence process pre and post contract. And then once all that's done, that those that last nine yards is really just you working with your, your mortgage broker, your lender to get the financing complete. Because once you get the green light, the clear to close, now you just get a doc, a, you know, a packet of documents in the mail from FedEx to go and sign in front of a notary and then send back. And that's your closing. And at that point, the next day you own another property. There you go. Fascinating process. So is your company's revenue primarily made on the back end through property management or how do you all get, how does your company get compensated? Yeah, we, we get nothing from management. In fact, you know, I, I, we really are not part of any kind of affiliate program. We really only have one source of revenue and it's essentially the, uh, what we call a marketing fee that comes from the sales side of the transaction. 
that's why our services are free to the buyers like you as our, as our client we never charge you because we're compensated much like a real estate brokerage gets compensated with a real estate commission from the seller the sales side of the transaction it's, it's a similar model with us we're we are a real estate brokerage and we can get paid a real estate commission on a broker to broker relationship which you know happens we do but to simplify it for your audience it's essentially a sales or marketing fee that we get compensated on from the seller, the sales side of the equation. That's why the buyer never has to pay anything. Okay, I got you. Well, Mark, we've got about five minutes left in the show, so I want to go ahead and give out now. And you've got a free gift for my audience, and that is a copy of your uh, book that you have available. So go ahead and tell them the, the name of the book, a little bit about the book, and how they can get that book, and then we'll wrap up the interview. Sure. So thank you for that, Jay. I appreciate it. This is kind of the mini version of the full book that's coming out here in about a month or so. It's called The Ultimate Guide to Passive Real Estate Investing. It's about a 40-some page, very dense real estate investing primer. If you read that, you would be more knowledgeable than probably 50% of real estate investors out there because I've just crammed everything you need to know into this 40-page document. But it's a free download. It's on our website at PassiveRealEstateInvesting.com. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you so much for offering that to my audience. So again, everybody, the, the website to download the cliff notes of the full book is www.passiverealestateinvesting.com. Now, one thing you mentioned a few minutes ago, Marco, is you really, really at a young age got really interested in personal development. And I'm interested in hearing over the years and even recently, if it applies, who are some of your mentors that you either have gotten to know through books or seminars that you would say have had the biggest impact and transforming your life personally? That's an interesting question. I don't think I've ever been asked that. And I get, I get asked a lot of questions on so many different shows and interviews. I would say probably one of the cornerstone people was Tony Robbins. And here's why I say that is because long, long, long ago, when Tony was new on the scene, he came out with this program called personal power. It was the original personal power. I have it's it like, right over here on cassette tape in my office. That's exactly what I have too. I still have the original cassette tape box set with that little journal in it. Yeah. So great, great program. I listened to that so many times. I think I wore down the cassette tapes and there's probably people listening to your show, Jay, that don't, are saying, what's a cassette tape? <laughs> and they for sure don't know what an eight track tape is. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. So Tony Robbins was very fundamental. He was like a cornerstone. But back then I was also listening to guys like Brian Tracy and Jim Rohn. Those were probably three of the original greats, Zig Ziglar from a sales perspective. So yeah, I, I think those guys made a, a significant impact in my life. And then, you know, there were the guys like Joseph Kosman, E. Joseph Kosman, if you remember him, he's the guy who created the ant farm. He created, came up with his own business and entrepreneurial program. He was a very wealthy person. But yeah, those are the guys that I think made a big impact. I love asking that question because I've been a personal development junkie since I was 24 years old, way back in 1984. And, you know, when I went to university, I went to Wake Forest University in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I didn't like to read. In fact, I, I actually hated to read. And really? I finally figured out why I didn't like reading. And it is, I wasn't reading anything I was interested in. I sort of hit my rock bottom, uh, had a lot of things going wrong in my life when I was 22, 23. And when I hit 24, I said, you know, there's got to be a better way. And I got very uh, spiritually engaged and uh, involved in the church and personal development readings. And uh, yeah, Zig Ziglar was one of my big heroes. You mentioned Tony Robbins. Have you heard very recently how he, for the first time ever, allowed a documentary crew and company to follow him around from when he got up in the morning until he went to bed at night while he was presenting one of his date with destiny uh -huh. and, and the name of the documentary it's on netflix it's amazing it's about a two hour long documentary you got to watch it marco since tony's one of your heroes it's called i am not your guru so you just youtube that that'll take you over to the netflix uh, documentary 
So anyway, I've, I've got a lot of seasoned real estate investors here tuning into the show, and I've got a lot of new real estate investors that have never done their first deal yet. So what's the best advice that comes to mind for the new real estate investor still looking to do their first deal? Jay, I love that question. You know, there's a lot of people out there that think about real estate and they know real estate is a great way to invest, create wealth, build passive income. People have a fear and really the fear is, is a mental game. And you know, we talked about this early on and then you kind of brought it full circle by asking, you know, about who your mentors were and who helped build, inspire you from a personal development perspective. You know, you've got your, your names, including Tony Robbins, including myself. You start off by investing in yourself. The more you learn, there's truth to the statement, the more you learn, the more you earn. Because you get to a point where you've built enough knowledge that you become competent. And that competence leads to confidence. When you have that confidence, you're more likely to take action. And that's really the sticky point right there. The key is execution. You could have the best strategy, the best plan in the world. You can have a wish and goals to achieve and have literally all the pieces in place lined up for yourself. But if you don't do that one last thing, and that's take action, execute, nothing else matters. So do all those things, but make sure that you, every day you take one small step, two small steps every day to lead you towards the achievement of that goal. Mm, folks, that's a writer downer right there. In fact, I wrote it down myself. Competence through education, competence leads to confidence and confidence leads to action. I love it. Marco, what a breath of fresh air. Thank you so much for being on the show. And uh, man, it was great. So your final parting words, and we'll call this show a wrap. Thank you so much, Jay. This was an honor. Absolutely. Folks, thanks for tuning in. One more time, take advantage of Marco's free offer on downloading his book called The Ultimate Guide to Passive Real Estate Investing, or rather the guide. And when he releases uh, the actual full-blown book itself, a few short months from now, you'll be invited to uh, take advantage of a free copy of that. So with that, folks, thank you for tuning in. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. And until we meet again here on the next show, here's to taking your real estate investing business to the next level. Bye for now.